Hello and thanks for checking out our new Escape Keeper controller. It's our first controller designed specifically for escape rooms. We've got a bunch of different puzzle modes built into it. This puzzle mode is the input sequence where people have to do something in a particular order. Here we have buttons, but it could be sensors spread across the room. It could be anything that creates an electrical contact. We'll program in a sequence. If that sequence is repeated, they succeed. If that sequence is wrong, you have the option of playing a failure sound. All these sounds are customizable. You just put whatever sounds you want on the SD card. If they don't finish the code in time, there's a timeout option as well. There's also a Morse code mode where the escape keeper will distinguish between long and short presses. As you can see, that succeeds, but if I was just to do three short ones, that doesn't work. Normally, the puzzle can't be solved continuously like we're doing here. We're using the auto reset timer to automatically reset the puzzle every time it's solved. That can be set anywhere from immediately up to 60 minutes. There's also a game timer built in that allows you to limit the amount of time they have to solve the puzzle. That can be set anywhere up to 60 minutes. You can also have sounds play as that timer gets closer to zero. Three outputs. This output is designated to indicating success. That's usually a mag lock that gets unlocked, but it could also be a solenoid latch, uh, you know, air solenoid. There's a bunch of different modes it can be used in. These two outputs by default indicate the pass and fail status of the puzzle, but they can also be programmed. They can do whatever you want when the game starts, when the game is running, when they make a mistake, when they succeed, and when they fail. Now I'll show you a few of the different puzzle modes. All right, now we're gonna demo the uh, number of inputs puzzle mode. Uh, this is the same controller, just a different board. Uh, we've got a reset button here connected to the reset input and a mag lock, small mag lock, with an emergency stop button. Now we've got key switches here as well, instead of push buttons. So these keys, you know, maybe you'd uh, have keys hidden around a room that the people have to find and, uh, you know, basically put them in, turn the key, whatnot. So let's see, we'll start up our game here. Find and turn the four keys to unlock the door. That's a startup message. That could be anything you want to, if you wanted to have instructions play when the game starts. So as you can see, the mag lock is now locked. Once we find one of the keys and put it in and turn it. Three more. You can have a message play that tells them like, you know, maybe you found one key, you know, whatever you wanna, wanna play. That only plays once. If they wanted to get sneaky and then maybe try and put the key in another switch and turn it. You know, they haven't made it any farther in the game. They've made no more progress. They still only have one key. Once they find another key and turn it. Two more. Two more. And then three more. One left. Congratulations. The door is now unlocked. So you can see the mag lock is now released. Now we could reset the puzzle. So that would be done in the back typically. So someone would come in, reset the room, put everything where it needs to be. You know, these could be also objects that are you know, that are hidden that they have to place on sensors. It doesn't have to be keys. And then when they try and reset the room for the next group. Reset error. Please turn all keys to the off position, then press reset to start the game. So they forgot to put one of the keys back. It's showing you here, it's blinking red, input one. This keys hasn't been returned. So that's why it wouldn't start the game. So now start the game. Find and turn the four keys to unlock the door. All right, everything's good. Uh, I'll demo the, the emergency stop on this one. So. Someone presses the emergency stop to get out of the room. Emergency stop detected. Unlocks. Please turn the emergency stop button and press reset. Find and turn the four keys to unlock the door. All right, and there you go. So that's basically number of inputs. I'm also going to use this board to demo the input state match puzzle mode. So in input state match, you're basically telling the controller you want the inputs to match a certain state. So that would typically be used with maybe uh, toggle switches or dials or something where you want them to have to figure out the state that these switches would have to be in. 
So, you know, these are key switches, but they could be typically toggle switches or something. You can have up to eight of these. So we'll program first what, they, what we want them to match. So we'll say first two on, these two off. All right, so we'll record that in right now. That's now programmed. That is the winning solution. We'll start the game. Find and turn the four keys to unlock the door. Now, if I do anything else, nothing's happening. But once I find that winning state, congratulations, the door is now unlocked. All right, you win. If you want to change the state, just type record. There, now the state is these two on, these two off. Start the game. Find and turn the four keys to unlock the door. All right, but get these two on. Congratulations, the door is now unlocked. All right, so that's fairly simple with just four inputs, but that could be up to eight. You could also set that puzzle mode up with a uh, submit button where you could have seven toggle switches and then a button for them to submit their guess and then limit the number of guesses. So maybe they have 10 attempts to guess at what the state of the switches has to be. So this is another demo of our input state match puzzle mode. In this case, we're using RFID tags and RFID sensors. So there's some sensors uh, below here, some RFID readers, and then these tags would typically be, you know, embedded in some sort of objects or something, and they could be placed around the room, and the object of the puzzle would be to find these objects and place them in different locations, uh, and then when they got all three correct, then that would trigger the success of the puzzle. So let's try that here now. Uh, well, the other difference here is we have a, uh, instead of a mag lock, we're using a, um, a solenoid latch. So uh, we've set the output mode of the escape keeper to, uh, instead of keeping the output on to keep a mag lock locked, uh, the output just pulses when they succeed. And this would be used to typically maybe unlock a, a little drawer or a cupboard or something that would maybe be spring loaded so it'll pop open when they were, you know, uh, when, when they solved the puzzle. All right, so let's try it. So we'll hit the reset button. So that one was correct. You can see if I place this anywhere else, nothing happens. But if you get it in the right location, obviously that sound can be customized. You can put it whatever you want in there. So that didn't work, right? So if we put the objects in the wrong place, it doesn't work. So now we've got two out of three. And there you go, you get all three in the right place. Puzzle succeeds. In this case also, we don't have the auto reset option enabled, so the puzzle won't play again, right? Nothing happens until the puzzle is reset by the game master. Uh, so you can, you know, set the auto reset timer, so maybe it will reset automatically after, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes, whatever you want, or just have it forced a, a manual reset where only the, someone in the back can hit a button, or you can also reset it by hitting that button there. This is what we call our mission impossible mode. This is what you would use if you want to have a room where players have to get from one end of one end of the room to the other without breaking, say, a laser beam or stepping on a booby trap tile that has a sensor under it, something like that. Here we have uh, three reflective sensors. So if uh, my finger gets too close, it triggers the input on the controller. And then two buttons. So one button's at the beginning of the room. Players have to press that to activate the lasers and enable the win button. Uh, if you just hit the win button without actually starting the puzzle, without actually hitting this first, it, you know, it doesn't do anything. It won't unlock the door, it won't reveal the secret or, or whatever you have this thing programmed to do. So I'll start the puzzle. So I have it programmed to blink the light at the beginning to let the players know that they have to press this first. Once it's pressed, this light turns on, letting them know that they can now uh, hit that button, and it, like the button's now active. So if we try and get across but break the laser, intruder alert. you get the intruder alert message. You have to come back, hit the start button again. 
Alert. Right, same thing. So now we'll try a different way. We'll win this time. So we'll restart it again. Come down here. Now we'll win. So there you go. So here we just have the green light coming on, but that could be programmed to, uh, you know, open a door or, you know, turn on uh, an air solenoid, whatever, whatever you want. It can be programmed to do anything. And lastly, there's link mode. We've got this wire connecting the two controllers together. Uh, this one basically prevents that one from being used until this puzzle is solved. So you can force them to have to solve the puzzles in order. You can do this with as many puzzles as you want. So right now this one is inactive, but you can see the lock is still locked. Once this is solved, you'll see that one activate. Find and turn the four keys to unlock the door. Three more. Congratulations, the door is now unlocked. Door is finally unlocked. And then when you want to reset the room, you only have to reset the master. Reset oh. error. Reset error. Do that correctly. Reset error. Please turn all keys to the off position, then press reset to start the game. There you go. It resets them both at the same time. And if there were any errors resetting the room, It'll let you know that as well.